and good afternoon. It is Friday, and that means it's time for our Lunch and Learn with me, Dr. Polly Heil Mealy with Abundant Health and Wellness Clinic. Now, we are located in downtown Humble at Main Street and Avenue C. So, if you come down to uh, downtown Humble and you want to stop by, we would love to see you. A lot of times when we used to do these Facebook Lives out in the lobby, people would walk in and uh, there would be just a whole lot of people there. And so, uh, we moved it into the office just so it's a little bit quieter um, and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where we are right now. So welcome to my office. And today I'm a little bit fragmented on what I want to talk about because I've got two articles in front of me that deal with the gut and deal with your brain function. So there's some new studies that have come out that says that what we eat and the environmental toxins that we are exposed to can damage the gut. And when it damages the microbiome of our stomach, our small intestine, our large intestine, it actually causes dementia, Parkinson's, and uh, Alzheimer's disease. And so, you know, a lot of people come in and they don't want to they don't want to work with their diet. They don't want to change their diet because they want to eat what they want to eat. And I tell everybody, I am not the food Nazi. I am not going to tell you that you can never eat this because I just don't feel like that is conducive to getting well because people want what they want. However, if we can show you how your gut affects everything else, then we can maybe get you to agree to leave off inflammatory foods so that you're able to move forward on the health continuum. So that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I've shown you this before. This is a protocol Thrive in 63, which we use uh, quite a bit uh, in our clinic for people that have gut dysfunction. And so I want to show you two pages, and I know they're backwards, but it's, it's going to be okay. Ooh, I just lost my footing here. This one, this is what happens when your gut is working properly. You digest properly, you absorb all of your nutrients, you have repair of your body, and you have health, okay? So digestion is key. If you don't digest properly, you cannot absorb properly, you cannot repair properly, and you will not have health. This little picture right here is poor digestion, toxicity, inflammation, and imbalance. And when you see uh, the arc here, these are all those sicknesses and diseases. So we've got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, we've got candida, allergens, IBS, we've got PMS, adrenal, thyroid, prostate issues, okay? Osteoporosis, acne, eczema, psoriasis. So all of these little words around here are sickness and disease. And this is why you come in to see me because you have this sickness and disease, skin conditions and that kind of thing. And so if we can get you eating properly and get you digesting properly, then all of these things go away and you can reverse from this picture over to this picture. Now, this is not my design. This is by Transformations Enzyme Corporation. They are right here in Richmond Rosenberg. Uh, Dr. Dickie Fuller is the uh, doctor over there. She's the one that formulates all of these products. She's absolutely brilliant, and this absolutely works. So I'm going to give you some scientific uh, information so that you can kind of connect the dots here. In a recent study in the journal Cell, C-E-L-L is the name of the journal, scientists at Harvard and Yale Medical Schools discovered that nerve cells within the intestinal wall release cytokines. Cytokines are a broad group of small proteins known as peptides. Cells use cytokines for signaling what's going on in their immediate environment. Cytokines can spur cell development, okay, immune modulation, and inflammation cycling. So let me tell you that again. Cytokines, these tiny little peptide proteins that the nerve cells in your intestines make. So a lot of times we don't think that nerve cells are in our gut, but we've got nerve cells in the gut, okay? And so it says that uh, the cells use the cytokines to signal 
for immune modulation and inflammation cycling. Now, we talked about inf inflammation last week, I think. Inflammation is good. Inflammation, sorry, inflammation means that your immune system is on point, your immune system is cycling, and that is a good thing. It is not good if the immune system stays hot on track for a long period of time. When inflammation goes a long time, then you're gonna set yourself up for chronic sickness and disease. So inflammation, that's a fever, that's swelling, okay, that's heat. That is a good thing short term. All of your white blood cells go and do what they need to do, but long-term inflammation leads to chronic sickness and chronic disease, okay? It says, the discovery that nerve cells were in the intestinal wall and have this communicative function is further evidence of the importance of the gut-brain axis. The gut-brain axis is the biochemical signaling that takes place between the gastrointestinal system and the central nervous system. Now, I just wanna tell you, your central nervous system is like mission control. It tells everything in the body what to do, how to do it, when to do it. And if you're off on that with your gastrointestinal mess, right, then you're not gonna be able to signal properly. And it's when we don't signal properly that we get all the sickness and disease. And so this is why we wanna pay really, really good attention to the gut-brain axis, all right? It says it is important that this connection of the central nervous system, right, and the gut system can have problems. So when there are problems between our gut and our brain, it should be evaluated early in the patient's diagnostic workup. One of the first digestive functions known to be controlled by the nervous system is peristalsis. Now peristalsis, that's what happens when your large intestine, well it's not just your large intestine, your whole GI tract from your mouth all the way to your bottom, now out in the potty, right? Everything moves by peristaltic motion. That's that wave-like constriction of all of those smooth muscles in your digestive tract. So that is the first thing they know about peristalsis. Um, if you have an issue with that, if things don't move through your system like they need to, then vitamin B5 is a natural peristaltic uh, herb that will cause your bowels to move. So that's something that's interesting. If that's something that you need, then we have that. It's vitamin B5. Vitamin B5 is also an adrenal vitamin. So if you are in adrenal fatigue, if you have cortisol issues, then vitamin B5 is good for that as well. Okay. Um, so uh, the peristaltic motion, it says the rhythmic contraction and relaxation of the muscles used to propagate food from ingestion to excretion. The nervous system controls the secretion of digestive enzymes and neurotransmitters. Now you may not know this, but most of your neurotransmitters get their start in your small intestine. Why is that? I don't know, I'm not God, I didn't make it that way, but I just can tell you that if you don't have a right uh, flora mix microbiome in your small intestine, then your neurotransmitters don't have any food to keep them going, so your gut works on your neurotransmitters. Now, what are your neurotransmitters? Those are all of your brain chemicals that keep you from going crazy. They help you sleep, they help you uh, with your stress, they help you with all that kind of stuff. So if your gut microbiome is messed up, that's your enzymes, your proteases, uh, your digestive enzymes, your hydrochloric acid, your B5, everything that causes that to work properly, if you're off on that, then that's not going to be a good thing for you, okay? We can now add the extensive and growing class of cytokines to that list. Now, let me just tell you, we've got a product in the clinic. It's called PXP Royale. And you can look that up, you can Google it. It's made by uh, Inzacta Corporation, I think. And what it is, it is a polypeptide polysaccharide uh, supplement that is very, very finely milled. You take it on an empty stomach. It goes right to the mitochondria 
to cause the cells to do what they need to do. So if you have trouble with this, you might want to go just a little bit deeper than enzymes, just a little bit deeper uh, in, your, in your gut formulas and look to this uh, polypeptide polysaccharide to go in and help your mitochondria. The reason I bring that up is because my other article has to do with mitochondria and how mitochondria is the energy in your individual cells. And if that's not working properly, then you're going to have some issues here, okay? It says the ability to communicate rapidly over long distances is one advantage of having the nervous system in charge of secreting these important cell signalers. This rapid communication becomes essential when you realize, and I love this, that the surface area of the average gut is 32,000 square feet. 32,000 square feet. Or the approximate size of a tennis court. Okay, so wrap your head around that, all right? If we took your stomach, your pancreas, your small intestine, and your large intestine, and we put it out in a rectangle, it would be the area of a tennis court. Now, that's pretty impressive, okay? That's really, really impressive. You know, we are fearfully and awesomely made, okay? This discovery calls into question the current classification of our organ systems. Now, he goes on and says, uh, he, yes, it's a he. He goes on and says that there are all kinds of reasons that we need to make sure that this uh, system is working properly and that the medical model of saying you have a respiratory system, you have a circulatory system, you've got a digestive system. He said that's just a little bit off because all of the systems work together synergistically. And that's what we believe. Holistic people believe that. Functional integrative medical doctors believe that. And one of the things when people come in, uh, they'll come in with XYZ symptoms that they want to have alleviated. And I will tell them, Holistic medicine doesn't work like that. We don't give you a supplement for this and a supplement for this and a supplement for this. We want to alleviate the symptoms, but we look below the surface and find out what is causing the symptoms. And that's what this guy is saying, that the medical model needs to change because we have so much more information now about the gut-brain axis that we need to look at the body as a whole and not its individual component parts. And I absolutely agree with that. He said these different, these complex systems made up of different organs and types of cells and biochemical reactions. From a functional perspective, the neutrons, immune cells, and hormones work synergistically in many instances. This finely tuned symphony of impulses, cells, and molecules work together as a single neuroendocrine immune system. I love that, okay? Neuroendocrine immune system that performs a daily life of sustaining functions. Regarding it as a single system would seem practical, especially since treating a part of it in isolation can disrupt its broader functions. And we know that this is true, okay? So I wanna kind of segue over. Now, I hope you heard. From your mouth to your bottom, you've got all of this nerve supply that's telling everything what to do. If, because we eat poorly, we have passive leaky gut system, uh, syndrome, we may have um, SIBO, small intestine bacteria overgrowth. Those are two things that we have. We might have IBD, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. So if we have those kind of things in the gut, that is going to cause everything to be off, okay? And this is why we spend so much attention on the gut. If we, like so many of my friends, okay, all of us, most of us battle with weight issues, okay? That is just because our planet is so toxic. We breathe it in, we wear it, um, we ingest it. And so the body, because the body wants to be smart and the body wants to survive, the body will push all of those toxins into our visceral fat, okay? The visceral fat holds that toxin and we just get heavier and heavier. Now, I have a lot of friends that have done bariatric surgeries and it has messed up their gut. And that really upsets me as a human being. And I don't know how with the Hippocratic Oath, first do no harm, that they can go in and alter the structure of your stomach 
so that you're not able to digest your food. How is that helpful? I do not know, but we know plenty of people that have that problem and it totally messes up their gut. When your gut is messed up, everything is going to be messed up. And so we spend a lot of time getting you to avoid inflammatory foods. So I just want to read a list of inflammatory foods. Don't hate, okay? I'm not saying you can't ever have these. I'm just saying right now, if you're trying to get your gut in line, you want to get rid of these foods. Now, the problem with these foods is these foods are our comfort foods, okay? Um, I know that when I get stressed, when I have a stressful day, and I've told you this before, that my go-to meal is... Uh, beef pulsa kibasa and homemade macaroni and cheese. I mean, that is my, you know, you take the sausage and you put it in the pan with some onions and you kind of get that all nice and greasy and then you get your uh, homemade mac and cheese, of course, with all of your in uh, organic ingredients and your quinoa pasta so it's not as bad as it could be. But those are my comfort foods. Well, guess what? If you use pasta without it being organic or without it being quinoa pasta, you're setting yourself up for an inflammatory meal, okay? And this is what we don't want. So these are the foods that are highly inflammatory. All of your grains, all of your grains, wheat, barley, rye, oats, rice, quinoa, aromatic, buckwheat, etc. Now, I happen to believe that quinoa is a protein, not a carbohydrate, but I didn't write the program, and so for the 63 days we want you to do this, we don't want you to have any grains. Legumes, okay? These are your peanuts, your kidney beans, your black beans, your red beans, your navy beans, uh, your lima beans, your lentils, all of that. Okay, we don't want you to have that Why? That's pure starch. Pure starch is inflammatory. All processed foods, now this is packaged lunch meat, as well as foods that are prepackaged, boxed, bagged, microwavable, etc. All of those have chemicals in them that are inflammatory. All commercial dairy products, milk, cheese, yogurt, ice cream, sour cream, etc. They say butter is okay. Now I'm just gonna say they don't want you to have commercial dairy products. Why? Because commercial dairy products have in them your um, uh, xenoestrogens, your false estrogens, and also it has your antibiotics in there. And so the xenoestrogens and the antibiotics can be inflammatory, and so we want you not to have those at this time. Organic dairy, I'm okay with that in small doses. And why is that? Because it doesn't have the antibiotics and it doesn't have the xenoestrogens. Now, I will tell you that some people are not able to digest the casein in the milk. I personally do not drink milk. Just gonna throw that out there. I don't think that I need to. I don't, I, my mom force fed me milk growing up. And of course I force fed my children because I thought that was what we needed to do. But then when I got to be a big girl and read up on it and uh, found out that uh, cow's milk is for baby cows and humans do not have the enzymes to tolerate it. Um, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. All sugar, and this is what people have problems with. So we have high fructose corn syrup and or artificial sweeteners, all right? They say local honey in moderation is acceptable. All alcohol, soda, and caffeine, okay? I'll just tell you, I say it's okay to do a cup of organic coffee. I'm just gonna say that, don't, don't hate me out there, but um, I just like the warmth of a nice cup of coffee in the morning. Of course, you don't wanna overdo it. You don't wanna have decaf, because decaf has so many chemicals in it, and all those chemicals are inflammatory. And then corn, okay? You don't wanna have corn. Everything has corn in it. Steve and I were uh, watching some kind of program. I can't even tell you what it was, but they had this big table and they had all kinds of food stuff, all kinds of household stuff. Um, they had apples and just all kinds of food, but they also had toilet paper, okay? And so the, the guy said, what do all these things have in common? And, uh, you know, the, the guy he was talking to across the table on the television program said, well, I don't know. And he kind of picked up the toilet paper. He goes, well, this isn't edible. And the guy said, no. He said, all of this has high fructose corn syrup in it. So did you know your toilet paper has high fructose corn syrup in it? Why? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it makes it soft. I don't know. But all of those things, that list that I just gave you is 
inflammatory. It's inflammatory foods. Okay, so that makes us to understand that we cannot do pasta, we cannot do bread, we cannot do cereal, and all of that, those foods are go-to foods, especially when we're stressed. I mean, I don't know anybody that can walk into a restaurant that serves nice, warm yeast bread and their mouth just doesn't salivate. I know that mine does, all right? I really, really limit myself on that because I know it is inflammatory. I know it is bad for me, and I know that it'll put weight on, and I know that excess weight, and we've talked about this before, when your body mass index is over the appropriate time or appropriate level, you have too much inflammation in the body. Remember, inflammatory processes lead to sickness and disease, and so we don't want that. So, um, let me see what it says here. It says, if we are able to alter the cytokine profiles, for example, there could be a whole variety of conditions in the gut that could uh, be modified to further an individual's health. The second improvement in therapeutics would be more general shift in the way we see disease progression, okay? Disease progression. With tangibles, all right, experimental evidence Supporting the concept of the gut-brain axis, it's now time to begin to look at the many gut and neurological disorders from a different viewpoint. To what extent do all of them have some form of connection? Did the gut problem start the neurolo neurological problem or vice versa? So this is really important. And the older I get, the more I'm concerned about neurological function. Now, I'm not... I'm not having any symptoms. Y'all don't get scared over there. I just know that as you get older, what happens? You have senior moments. Don't want to have any senior moments. And so I do a whole lot with my gut to make sure that my brain stays the way my brain needs to be, okay? So it says the broader viewpoint may even enter in the realm of everyday health. Did that poor quality fast food you ate for lunch affect how your cognition worked in the afternoon or in the evening, okay? It says, functional medicine practitioners and other forms of medicine have long understood the importance of the whole body approach to care, factoring in basic and essential aspects of lifestyle like what we eat. To that end, you would be well advised to stop shopping for food based solely on price and taste and start thinking of how that food will affect your gut and then your brain and then your mind. So this is what we want to do, okay? And I know, I know there are some, I had a lady that came in earlier this week and she did not want any supplements. She just wanted to uh, work with her diet. And I applaud that and I think that's awesome. I think we need to eat as healthy as we can. But I will just tell you, the nutrient content of our food is not as good as it was in the 1960s. And that is because of the way we have changed our industrial farming and all that kind of stuff. Even if your food is homegrown and organic, the, the um, ground does not have the base nutrients in it for the uh, plant to absorb that so that you have a good nutrient-dense food. Now, that being said, organic fruits and vegetables have 40% denser nutrient uh, totals, okay? So you can actually eat less and still have the same nutrition. However, it has been proven that the uh, nutrients that we get from our food are not sufficient for the stress of life of the lifestyle that we have today. Now, what does that mean? We are bombarded with all kinds of environmental toxins. And I'm just going to touch on this briefly because I only have five minutes and I don't have time to tell you everything I need to tell you about this new 5G um, movement that's coming with the internet. But I'm telling you that the frequency of the 5G is going to disrupt and break our DNA. It's going to mutate our DNA, okay? And so we have to be very, very careful and take in to our bodies things that will ward off the EMFs, envir uh, 
EMS, electrical mag, uh, magnetic frequencies. There you go, I'm gonna get it out. Um, so your EMFs, and I'm just gonna tell you, Wi-Fi is everywhere, it's everywhere. And when we get those 5G towers, it is going to be even more everywhere, okay? And so what I do, just gonna tell you, in my bra, on the left side, because you have to do it on the left side, I wear a little bitty black onyx diode, and that puts out a force field so those EMFs can't come and get me, okay? I do not want my DNA shattered. I do not want my DNA mutated any more than it already is, okay? And so we have to take supplements that keep our gut microbiome in a situation that we can actually do what we need to do with all of the cytokines and the peptides and all of the neuro uh, brain signaling back and forth that it all works the way it is supposed to. That EMF is a killer. Uh, I had a gentleman in the other day who actually works in that field and he said, you just don't know what's coming. He said, it is really, really scary and people need to protect themselves. So that's a kind of another program, but I will tell you, I wear a diode. I also have a whole house Wi-Fi diode on my um, breaker box in my house. So there are things that you can do to protect yourself. You can put diodes on the back of your phone, on your computer and all that kind of stuff, which I think is kind of a waste of money because you're out and about and you're in the Wi-Fi all the time. That has nothing uh, to do with the toxins that we eat, with the toxins that we smell, with the toxins that we wear and all that kind of stuff. So it is a multifaceted problem that causes inflammation. So what I want you to do is think about what you're eating and how you are contributing to the inflammatory process. If we contribute to the inflammatory process and the inflammatory process remains unchecked, we might be finding that there is a key component of that inflammation to our brain function. I think it talked about, the article talked about uh, Alzheimer's, uh, Parkinson's, and dementia, okay? so. I don't know anybody that wants to get old and have those things, right? I know I certainly don't. And I eat well most of the time. I follow the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time I do what's right and maybe 20%, maybe not. In my case, probably it's more like 90-10, all right? I'm not gonna tell you I don't ever have a Snickers bar because sometimes I do. I'm not gonna tell you I never have a soda. Sometimes I do, but it's not every day, it's not every week. And these inflammatory foods, I pretty much stay off of those inflammatory foods, okay? I don't do legumes, not even a little bit, all right? I'm real, real careful about the grains. I stay away from grains. Every, every once in a while, I'll have a half a piece of bread, uh, especially if it's that hot, yeasty kind, okay? When I do my pasta, I do quinoa pasta because quinoa pasta doesn't have gluten in it. It has other things in it. They don't want you doing it on this program, but I'm just saying, if we get our inflammation down, we're going to be much, much happier and we may just preserve our brain function. So, just wanna say thank you so much. We had a lot of people that were on the call today. I appreciate that. Um, I appreciate the fact that you guys shared uh, last week's program so many times. I, I think we had very close to 100 different shares, so I appreciate that. Get the word out because we don't want people freaking out. Uh, we have the diodes here, Michelle. We have them here in the clinic, and so uh, any place that sells good um, you know, health uh, supplements and that kind of thing should have them. Be careful of the brands because I think some brands are better than others, so you can call the clinic and see what we have here. You guys take care. It's the weekend. Have a good weekend. Stay warm. It's supposed to be cold. Um, if you're in our area and you're going out to the rodeo cook-off, then that'll be great. Have fun. Might see you there. And I will see you next week. Take care. Be good to yourself. Bye-bye.